Welcome to a new Akamai video tutorial. My name is Mike Ellison. I'm a senior solutions engineer at Akamai. And today we are going to be taking a sneak peek at the new Terraform provider for Akamai. The new Terraform provider as of October 2019 is still in development, but already contains several key features that you can use to codify your infrastructure through Terraform with Akamai. For those unfamiliar with Terraform, it's developed by HashiCorp and it allows you to do infrastructure as code. It integrates very well with many of the largest cloud vendors like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud Platform. And many of our customers have asked to do the same for Akamai as they are managing both. Well, today we're going to take a quick look into what we have today, how it works and show you some examples. First of all, I recommend everybody to go to the Terraform page, terraform.io slash docs slash provider slash Akamai slash index.html, where you can find all the information related to the newest Akamai provider. And this will be updated when more features and more of our Akamai products will be available through the Terraform provider. Now in here, you'll find the basic information that you will require in order to make requests through Terraform to our Akamai APIs. And our Akamai APIs are available on developer.akamai.com. And as a prerequisite to this course, we make the assumption that you've already used the Akamai APIs and are familiar with how to authenticate the requests. So let's get started with our first example of managing your delivery configurations through the property management API built in through the Terraform provider. This page will actually explain to you step by step how it actually works, but I think it's easier to actually show you in a test configuration that I've set up. So let's go to our terminal, and this requires you, of course, to have Terraform installed. So we can check that at Terraform help. Please go to the HashiCorp Terraform website in order to get this set up. Once you have Terraform actually working, one thing that could throw you up off is to make sure that you're actually in the right directory. I have stored my akamai.tf, my Terraform configuration file, on the desktop, so make sure you're in the right directory, and type in Terraform in it. Now I've done this before, so it has already pulled the Akamai provider as well as the local provider, which I'm utilizing. And say if you were using the AWS provider, it would load this in as well. Now if you've not never done this before, it will load it in and, and store this locally. But since I've already done it, we get to go ahead from Terraform and saying that it, everything is successfully initialized. Then we can go ahead and type in Terraform plan. And what it will now do is it will take the akamai.tf file that is in the desktop file. And basically every Terraform file, all the TF files that you have in this directory are going to be parsed and set up. As you can see here, it's taking a look into setting everything up. But let's actually take a look at the actual file that I've already set up and explain to you how this is actually working. So here we have the akamai.tf file and we'll go through it step by step. First, we're declaring that we want the akamai provider to be used. And then in here, we're actually using our unique authentication for the APIs. On a side note, these are my personal tokens, which have been deactivated after uploading this video tutorial, so they will be useless. That said, you can also store these locally in a .hrc file and pull them from that. That said, you of course need to authenticate the requests to the API through Terraform. Now another thing that you need to do is actually declare through the data source in Terraform uh, several steps. So first of all, we are actually pulling the contract ID which is required into creating properties in the right contract, as well as the group ID, which we're also setting to put again, properties in the right group. And finally, what we're declaring here is we're actually utilizing a local file. In this case, on the desktop is a rules.json file, which will have all the rules in JSON format for our delivery configuration. And we have that right here. I pulled this down earlier from a different configuration it explains every Akamai functionality in JSON. So here you have everything that is set up related to CP codes, which I'm doing a lot of different CP code matches on. 
everything set up for redirects. And we have, of course, origin, location. In this case, we're utilizing our Akamai net storage and I'm downloading it from there and set everything correctly. And if your rules.json is properly formatted and doesn't contain any errors, you can then go ahead and load it in there. Once we have all our data sources defined, we're gonna go ahead and create resources. Now you have the ability to specify your Akamai Edge host names. In this case, we're just calling this resource example. And here you can see already these data sources that we have defined. So in this case, for group, we're actually taking the group ID that we have set here by data.akamai-group.default-id. We're doing the same with the contract. So again, the contract default ID and putting this in here. And here we have our product. And our product is actually an interesting thing. We have to tie that and we are utilizing these names. I again, highly recommend you to go to the Terraform page and go here to the appendix where you can find all the pro common product IDs and this will be heavily built upon. In this case, I'm utilizing Akamai's ion standard product. So I'm utilizing the PRD underscore Fresca in my configuration. And basically what I'm asking it to do is create an edge host name called terraform-test.akamized.net. Now, secondly, I'm gonna create another resource. And in here, we're gonna create an Akamai property. So again, we have the Akamai properties here. And I'm gonna call that terraform-test. I'm giving it a logical name. So this is the name of the configuration that will be used on the Akamai site. I'm specifying a contact email address that will be contacted. And again, specifying the product. If you're trying to specify a product that is not actually available on your contract, you will get an error thrown by Terraform saying that the PRD underscore Fresca is unavailable. Earlier in my example, I used PRD underscore SPM, but I don't actually have the entitlement to use Ion Premier, so I got an error. Now, next again, I'm utilizing the group and, the, and contract where I want this configuration to be specified. And I'm specifying for which host names this is. On the left, we specify the host name that we're serving towards the end users. And on the right, we're utilizing the edge host name that we're setting up. Now, it might be a little bit confusing as I'm using the .akamized.net host name twice, but this could very well be your own website like www.schrodingerstudios.com, which can then be mapped to an Akamai host name like schrodingerstudios.akamized.net. We specify the rule format. And again, I recommend going to the property management API where you can find all this information regarding, again, the latest version of our property manager API. And here we're specifying that the rules are actually going to be retrieved from our local file. So data, local file with the name rules and the content of the actual file. So again, all these rules are going to be loaded into the conf configuration and added in there. Next up, once we've actually then create the configuration, we're going to have to activate this again. Of course, you have the ability to split this up and make sure that, again, common practice and best practice is to split this up, of course, and do all sorts of testing before you push it live to production. But again, let's go over this. So we have specify a resource. It's the Akamai underscore property underscore activation. We're calling it staging. The property in this case is our property ID. The version is just the local version that we have or the newest version. If you don't specify this, it will just iterate and create a next version. We're specifying the network, an email address to be contacted once it's live, and the activate boolean is true to make sure that we're actually activating it. And we're doing the same for production. We're creating a resource called production, and in this case, the network is production. Now let's take a look how this is actually work and when we put this in action. Earlier, I said the Terraform plan, no changes, infrastructure is up to date. So let's actually make a change. 
I'm going to go into my rules JSON and I'm going to change this caching, day, caching behavior to five minutes. Save my file. So after changing the TTL of our caching setting, let's go into Terraform plan. As you can see here, it's running through it. Everything is refreshed and it's planning it out. And let's see what our changes are actually are. It's showcasing all the rules. And here you see that we're now changing the TTL from 15 minutes to five minutes. So now let's actually commit this by typing in Terraform apply. We're going to have to acknowledge these settings. And there we go. Let's take a look in our control center. Click on Terraform test. And here we see we just created a version four. If we scroll down here at the default, now our caching setting is set to five minutes. So let's go back to Terraform. Go and apply this one more time. And now it will actually ask the following. We're going to be activating this on production. We're going to be activating version four, as well as on staging. Now don't ask me why the order of staging and production is separate, or is production takes precedence over staging, but we can figure this out. Perhaps it's alphabetical. Let's click on yes. And now we're sending the request to actually activate the fourth version of our configuration. It's going to pull every 10 seconds or so, and with Akamai's new fast activation, staging should be active in about two to three minutes, and production should be active in about five to six minutes or so. And we can actually verify that we have now activated this. Again, in the control center, go to activate, click on OK. And as you can see here, we're now activating this on staging, and we're also activating this on production. So we can actually refresh this. And there we go. So it should be about five minutes. Reality shows me that it is usually about two or three. And same here with production, which tends to be four to six. Now with the property manager API or the property management in Terraform, the possibilities are endless because now what you can do is you can basically take your rule.json file. You can utilize the property manager API to pull down the rules, store them locally or store them in GitHub, make your changes, check them into GitHub, download them from GitHub, and then call the new update inside of your Terraform file, run that through a Terraform script, Again, the plan and apply rule, prepare a new version and activate that version while doing all your test cycles in between and then basically push out your Akamai change live and be able to codify your infrastructure. So there you have it. This is just a sneak peek at the Akamai provider. We have gone over the edge host name resource. We have gone over the property as well as property activation. As you can see, you also have the ability to utilize your Akamai VAST DNS product by managing both your records and your zones through Terraform. I didn't show this in this example, but please follow the outline as described here in order to manage your records there. And also you can manage your property variables with the variable support that we have added several years ago. Now, of course, there are many more Akamai products which we are working on to get support for into Terraform. We'll have a roadmap set out for Q4 2019 as well as 2020 to ensure that other products will also be added into Terraform. That said, if you are utilizing our Terraform provider and you come across any issues, you can report these on GitHub on our Terraform provider 
dash Akamai. You can raise an issue, as you can see, several other engineers have already raised some issues. We're going to be looking into that and make sure that we have the best performing Terraform provider for both the, the support for the features that we have today and hopefully be able to get you on your way. If you have any questions related to Terraform, please feel free to reach out and comment on this video or any of the blog posts or reach out to your local Akamai representative. We're always here to help. We have a dedicated DevOps team ready to help. And if you contact me directly with any questions, hopefully I can guide you on your way as well. So hopefully this video tutorial has been helpful to you. I wanna thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much and happy optimizing.